Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld uh, with an Edge Lab demo uh, discussion for you. Uh, if you've been playing with Edge Lab, and I hope you are, uh, easy enough to do, you go to edgelab.digital, um, follow the instructions through me to, to build an environment. Um, the pies are a really easy way to start, and that's what I want to discuss here um, because it's, it's not necessarily obvious all of the automation that's, that's taking place behind the scenes and what's happening with it. Uh, and I actually have an Edge Lab spinning up in the background right now. Um, it's, it's literally this environment. Let me see if I can get it sized to the screen for you. Um, and one of the things that we've done here is that the Edge Lab comes up with the, this is the MAC address of the first machine where I did the start me on, and it's running through this bootstrap process. Uh, and I want to explain what's happening and then what the cluster build actually looks like, because this is a pretty novel thing that we've been able to add into Digital Rebar. So when Digital Rebar starts, there's a flag that lets you say, for the service that's gonna run and manage the environment, you can also tell it to create an agent for itself. Um, and then that agent can run the content packs to bootstrap itself. So a lot of the work that you would normally do in a script is actually moved into the uh, infrastructure's code controlled environment. Uh, and is now part of your ability to, to manage. And it's literally going through, you can see it changing the bootstrap workflow right now. Uh, the bootstrap workflow is just a single stage. That stage is decomposed into different tasks. We, we keep adding more tasks and having tasks that are environment specific. Uh, things that set up our context infrastructure so you can run manager st uh, side, manager context, actions in from, from Docker containers and actually set up that environment. In this case, for the Edge Lab, we're doing things like downloading the ISOs that you need to boot the Raspberry Pis, setting up the preferences, uh, and creating an SSH key and then propagating it to all the other machines or making it available for the other machines, um, setting up the subnet correctly, and the bootstrap lock. So if you've seen our other videos, you've seen these things get set up. They're just components of digital rebar that are required to make everything go. The lock is interesting because at the end, it's set so that you can't make accidental changes. So I couldn't go in here and run a K3S install on it because the system's locked. Uh, nice little safety there. If you unlock it, you can make it part of the cluster. Um, once it has an IP address, you need to add an IP address. And so I want to show you that um, as part of this process. So that I literally just brought up a Edge Lab infrastructure. I haven't plugged in the other machines yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, this is the bootstrap ISO process here, and I'm going to go and let the other machines in it bootstrap. You'll hear the fans kick in. I've already flashed the BIOS through that first process, so um, they should just kick in, and then we will get the machines going through the discovery process, registering all of them into the state data for digital rebar, and we'll see that process uh, coming along in just a moment. If I turn on the event system, I should be, I can see the leases being um, offered to the uh, PIs as they've come on, on board. And then I should start seeing registration events um, as, the, as the system downloads uh, the, the files and makes everything, uh, makes everything work. Well, obviously that's uh, made possible by having the correct subnet next boot information, and then the right boot contexts. Uh, so in this case, there's a version of Sledgehammer for our Pi. And uh, now you'll notice there's a whole bunch of lease activity. It's important to remember that um, net boots aren't a single boot. They're actually chained bootloaders. So um, you're gonna go through a D multiple DHCP processes. And now you can see I've registered the systems. Uh, I've creating and updating the updates or represent the actual discovery process. So now I have the cluster set up, I have the discovery information, and we should be ready to go. If I come back to my workflow here, what you'll see is my next step is going to actually be run the K3S cluster. And I wanna break that down for you. Uh, basically that starts with a standard pattern for us to build clusters. It's gonna build a cluster profile. Um, if you don't have one already, it's going to elect a leader, so one one of the machines that comes up, whichever is first, is going to become the leader of the cluster. That'll get documented, uh, written in, back into the cluster information, um, and then that leader is going to move forward. So it's going to download the uh, binaries that it needs, uh, check their cha their SHAs. Um, the other ones are just going to wait until uh, credentials show up in the shared profile. 
then it'll actually build the Kubernetes cluster. That then generates the credentials, so the admin comp file and a, and a join token. And once that's happened, then the other machines have what they need to then do the Kubernetes installation. And since we've already downloaded the files, we don't need to go back to the internet. We'll go to the uh, shared file location in Digital Rebar and pull those down. Um, so the overall process becomes super fast. It's so fast, it's, it, it's hard to watch in real time and, and get any meaningful information. So I wanted to build that little workflow so that you can see exactly what that looks like. So now I can take these machines, I can pick my K3S install over here, say go. You'll notice I've got um, these two are now waiting. They have now got the cluster profile. Um, this one is now downloading. So we, we set the icons based on the activities is downloading those actions. Uh, it finished and is now setting itself up as the leader. Uh, those changes are going to be evident if I look here, all those uh, pieces, and I can come in and actually watch the process happening live. One place I like to watch things happen is in the actual uh, cluster profile here because this will also get live updates. So you can see this is what a leader, elected leader looks like. We have the address, the name, and the uh, digital rebar ID for the system and the name of this profile. And then once those tokens are generated, they're going to get updated back. You can see we get to see live updates. And then my lot, my node token here, uh, sort encrypted, but I can I can see it uh, if I have the right security, which I do. And this is my admin comp file, which I would need to then access the Kubernetes cluster. And once that's in, the install process for Kubernetes is is almost instant um, downstream from that. And so now we have a working cluster um, as per uh, this process. So I, I want to let you see exactly what's going on behind the scenes with the workflow stages and tasks and shared uh, profile shared storage data storage of uh, shared profile data how all that interplays sometimes it's easier to see a swim lane uh, i hope this was helpful please we'd love to know what you think how to explain this better um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes and, and I, I loathe saying it's magic it's not it's um, orchestration uh, which maybe is the next thing to magic. And so uh, please let us know what you think. Uh, if you have hints or ideas that would help us explain this to the next person, please let us know. We're always eager to have uh, the discussion both around Edge Lab and also around Digital Rebar in general. So this is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN. Thank you very much.